Suppose that a stationary observer is standing and listening to the sound that is created by a certain moving object. So if the speed of that moving object that's creating the sound wave is less than the speed of the sound itself, that means the Doppler effect will be observed. The observer will perceive a change in frequency. Now what happens when the speed of the moving object that's creating the sound wave is greater than the velocity of the sound wave itself? Well, something known as a shock wave is created, as we'll see in just a moment. But before we define what a shock wave is, let's look at a few definitions. An object such as a jet is said to have supersonic speed if it travels faster than the speed of sound and such speed is usually defined using something known as the Mach number. The Mach number is simply the ratio of the velocity or the speed of the object to the speed of the sound wave. So, let's look at the following four cases. Let's suppose that in case A, we have a sound source that's, that is creating the sound that is stationary. So if the sound source is stationary, an observer who is also stationary will hear the same exact frequency along any perimeter of this sound wave that's created by the sound source and the sound waves will look something like this where it will have equally spaced wavelengths so the distance between any two consecutive crests will be exactly the same so that means the frequency will also be the same and the Doppler effect will not be observed now let's move on to case B Suppose that the sound source moving at a velocity lower than the speed of sound. So now our sound source shown in red is moving, let's say, in this direction along the x-axis. Now the Doppler effect will be observed because there will be a change in wavelength. The wavelength of our sound wave to the right will be changed, it will be less. And so the frequency perceived will be greater on this side than on this side. So in case B, the Doppler effect takes place. Now let's move on to case C. Now in case C, let's suppose that our sound source, our object that's creating the sound source is moving at a velocity equal to the velocity of sound. The following diagram will be observed. Notice the wave fronts will pile up directly in front of the sound source. And finally, let's move on to part D to case D. What happens if our object is traveling with supersonic speed? In other words, the speed of the object is greater than the speed of sound. Well, the following diagram of the sound waves will be observed. Notice the sound waves created will be in back of our moving object. And the wave fronts pile up along the sides as shown. Now the wave crests overlap one another and form a large amplitude wave known as the shock wave. So the shock wave is a direct result of constructive interference of all these different circular waves. Now, let's suppose we have a person standing on the ground and an airplane that is traveling at supersonic speed passes the person who is standing on the ground. The person will hear a loud boom that is known as a sonic boom when the airplane travels past it. So this line shown is the shock wave. So the plane will pass it and some time after the plane passes, the person hears a sonic boom when the shock wave reaches this person. 
Now, we can use the following equation to calculate what the angle that my shock wave makes with respect to the x-axis along which the plane is traveling. So the sine of this angle is equal to the ratio of the velocity of the sound to the velocity of that object. And this only works as long as the velocity of the object is higher than the velocity of sound. So let's Let's look at the following example. Calculate the angle that the shock wave makes with respect to the horizontal if the plane's speed is 600 meters per second and the speed of sound in the air is 350 meters per second. So because the object is moving at supersonic speed, we can use this equation to calculate the angle that the shock wave makes. So, the angle is equal to the inverse of the sine function of the ratio of 350 to 600. Notice the meters per second cancel, and we're left with an angle of 35.7 degrees.